Hi friends, I'm Matt Sergeant, and I'm the pastor for Andrew Chapel United Methodist Church in Vienna, Virginia. I'm so grateful you have joined me today for Wednesday's Word. Wednesday's Word is a wonderful way for us to connect with each other in the middle of the week, for me to reach out to you and for you to connect back with me, and I'm so grateful you have joined with me online today for a time of devotion and brief prayer. I hope that you're doing well today. Well, today's topic is about God's amazing abundance. You know, we are all faced with limitations of one sort or another, aren't we? And we're often critical of ourselves about our own limitations, right? And others can scrutinize us for our limitations as well. And sometimes what they say to us can be pretty hurtful. You've heard maybe some of these things. Examples like this, well, you're not strong enough, or you're not tall enough, or slender enough, or how about this one, you're not smart enough, or they might say something like this, I'm sorry, you don't have the qualifications for the job. Hurtful things, right? And, and the list can go on and on. Where others will scrutinize us for our limitations, or yes, we recognize our own limitations. But you know, that's really just part of the human condition. We all are faced with limitations of one sort or another. And you know, the disciples who followed Jesus were faced with their own limitations in ministry. I wanted to share with you today from the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 14 a story about that. Let me read the scripture to you and then we'll share a little more. It begins here in the 13th verse if you want to follow along or go back and read it for yourself. Jesus withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. And hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. You know, I really kind of understand the disciples' dilemma there and their limitations. I mean, there they looked at this vast crowd out there that was not just five thousand men. It was far more than that because the women and children were there. And they looked out, and these, these people had come from far away. And he said, they said to Jesus, boy, it's getting late. You better send them. Please send them to the local towns where they can get some food because there's a looming food crisis that's going to happen here if you don't do it, Jesus. And then he says to them, ah, they can stay. Don't send them away. You give them something to eat. And here's where another limitation came in. Remember what they said? Well, we only have five loaves and two fish. What are we going to do with that, Jesus? Only. <laughs> That's the emphasis there. This word only puts boundaries on the limitless possibilities of God. I mean, it fences in the disciples' vision, and it fences in our vision, too, to what is practical and responsible. I mean, what it does is it pays attention to the obvious situation. 
Jesus, we only have five loaves and two fish. What are we going to do with that? Hear the limitation there? You see, it does not pay attention to what God can do and God's amazing abundance when we are joined with God in his mission. You know, see, this is what happens. This, this situation stunted the possibilities of the disciples because they saw that the bread and fish would only go so far. They didn't think about Jesus being with them. I mean, here they were. They, they knew Jesus was performing these wonderful healings and miracles, and yet they forgot that God was on their side. And they were just looking at their limitations and not their possibilities when they were right there with Jesus himself only. <laughs> it's a limiting word. It's one that doesn't look at the possibilities of God. You see, we must never count God out of any situation. With our limitations, we need to remember that God can bring us out of any limitation that we have. For when we are weak, God is strong. Friend, bring God into your situation. And you will find that you can do abundantly more than you can ever dream or hope to dream. I wanted to ask you a couple questions. Where do you find yourself not enough? Where do you feel limited? Limited by circumstance or by opportunity or past hurts or mistakes? Where do you feel limited? I want you to recognize that with God, God was able to feed the multitudes and God is able to take your limitations and, and make something beautiful out of it where God can do amazingly abundant things with you. God fed the multitudes in abundance with all that seemed so meager and insufficient in the disciples' lives. And he can do the same with you. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Well, gracious and heavenly Lord, we give you tremendous thanks for your amazing abundance. That you are able to do abundantly more than we can ever ask, dream, or think according to your love and power that resides right within us, right among our own limitations. Lord, we give you thanks for it all, that you are amazingly abundant. And we pray this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I hope that you have a wonderful week, and I pray that you will join us this Sunday for worship at 10 a.m. Take care, and God bless.